All right, give me just a moment because this is going to require a little bit of setup on my end, mainly because we have a massive player base on tonight. So just, we're going to do blow it up because F it, it's fun. We got a lot of people on, so might as hell get right into it. All right. Turn that down slightly. And then I'll verify on the multi, because I don't have anyone's perspectives, unfortunately. Actually, that's side chat, so it's not gonna matter. Wah. Ah, yes. Baranau, winter from the IFA mod pack. This is gonna be a fun one. And I think all the communities are being divided amongst uh, both sides here. So Germany and Soviet Union. Yep, just verifying the flags. So we've got for this OFCRA match. And I'll set it to 15 just to rock out. All right. World War II. Let me go ahead and put that in the title here. I guess I'll put that because, I mean, that's pretty critical for the player count we're uh, rocking tonight. Here, if I were to put that up for you, there you go. That number right there, man. It's going to be a massive match, and I am quite excited. It's rare that you see these things, but we'll see how things go. Looking at it, it looks like most of the BIA players are amongst Op4, but I do also see a good handful within Blue4 as well. So that is what I've got with that. We got the Soviets on the northeastern corner, Germans on the south western you've got a company hq marker and then a flagged area here uh shadow i'll be handing out the ip for everyone that slots in my op later uh after this though uh so i'll hand it there but anyway here is how the operation is going to go in terms of point scoring for ofcra because uh i mean I doubt we're going to see an entire side get wipes, but hey, anything's possible. So, uh, the village here marked as Velikai Luki. Probably butchered that. And then you got the uh, company fob there. Uh, both are worth four points by the end of the 90-minute round, so whoever has more infantry in either area uh, are going to gain those four points. Uh, Blue 4 has to have the village still under their control by the 30 minute mark. That gains them additional 4 point. And then 5 or less people by the end of the game for either side. Good god. And then the Soviets still have to control the FOB by the end. So this is a mirror match of objectives, interestingly enough. Oh, and I do have Ivno reaching out to give me his multi. One second. I'll get that added ASAP. Always a sucker for the multi. So we can get you guys some on-the-ground perspectives of people slaughtering each other. Let me go ahead and get that added to the title as well. Excellent. Um, Yeah, the pog up is in three and a half hours. And normally OFCRA starts an hour earlier, but Europeans haven't done daylight savings to go ahead by an hour and this is a european based community so i'm ahead by an hour but they aren't in the freaking world clock because i'm gonna be honest daylight savings is a waste of damn time but uh that's why this is starting now instead of an hour to hour and a half ago but regardless blue four and op four op four have to maintain control of their fob by the 30 minute marker for an additional four points blue four have to maintain control of the village by the 30 minute marker for an additional four points and then they have a five or less 
which I haven't seen in OFCRA at all in a while, but basically it means if you knock out the entire team to five or less people, you gain an additional four points as a bit of a supremacy. But with 185, 190 players, ooh, that's going to be an interesting one for sure. But we'll see if the server can even handle it. There's probably going to be a little bit of desync in the opening, but usually it's able to uh, work itself out by, eh, I'd say the start of the match, considering they usually have an 8 or 10 minute, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, warm-up period anyway, and usually the server's taken care of by then. Ah, uh, right, I should have put an option for the server too, but c'est la vie. Also, Jen, how you doing? But regardless, I've been told to keep an eye on some specific assets in the opening. Uh, they're going to be getting started in two minutes. All right. Uh, so I'll be panning my camera to certain assets. But as far as I'm aware, both sides are going to have planes and armored support. So when you have 180, 190 people, that's usually, you know, 85 to 90 players per side. That's enough to fill roughly two infantry platoons with at least three squads each in a command team for them and supporting assets. So we'll see armor, we'll see air, we'll probably see some AAA that might also be used again as uh, anti-infantry. It'll be interesting. It will definitely be interesting. And then uh, after this round wraps up, we will go ahead and do the pog op tonight, which will be a more simple op. Uh, and then I'll have some late night mission dev to get some garrison work done. Uh, I spent this morning literally just doing video editing. <laughs> Couldn't even get around to uh, looking at a mission file per se. So. I'm going to go ahead and write down on my sticky note for any whatchamacallit highlights that come up. And we'll see how things go. But otherwise, how is everyone doing in chat since we have a minute to stall? Uh, I probably won't get around to reading off every single player on both sides because when we start getting past the hundreds, you know, in the triple digits, that gets very difficult to do. I can do it in FNF because they have a full 15 minute save start, but OFCRA usually it's five to eight. And uh, especially with the amount of assets we're gonna have on both sides probably only gonna just highlight the commanders and we'll see how things go ah oh, that sounds good as Whew. but again both sides i wonder if both sides are going to start with forces in the field they're about to start things up nasa and mancho being the uh or manco being the two admins from uh 19th and OFCRA, respectively. <laughs> and that is the sound of about 190 people being moved into the channel. All right. So let's start in the field uh, for both sides, and then we'll just go through one and the other. So op four, we've got a squad already starting with this HQ building. They've got some uh, vehicles built in, but it looks like it's smoking, actually. Not sure if that's intentional or if it got clipped in. Maybe it's just for a status effect to add some uh, effects in the AO, but they've added a triple A weapon and they put a bunch of smoke in front of it so it couldn't be used mostly against the village. That's smart. So this is meant to be uh, against the aircraft, but it also has some angles to potentially shoot down at the ground, uh, though it can't move its guns down. So I think that's why they intentionally put the sandbags here to block it, so that's smart. And then they've got a ladder and a stairwell over here to pretty much get on top of that position. So I think they intend for the Soviets to use that triple uh, story as well. We have PPSHs, some Mosin Nagans, DP-27s, the standard IFA weaponry. I'm trying to see if they have any, like, SVTs. Okay, yeah, so we do have some SVTs, uh, the 10-round uh, rifle semi-automatic weapons there. Otherwise, looking at the Germans. Oh, yeah, the particle effects are going way into the air, so they've really spaced them out to help prevent lag, but you got some armored battles that have gone off on the side. Uh, looking at the German forces here, they also have air defense fenced around. <laughs> but looks like they're going to mainly be Car 98, MG 42. No, that's an FG. Yeah, that's an FG 42. So these guys are meant to be airborne. MP40s. 
We do see some G43s in play as well. But that's why I really like for PvP you have um, Soviets and Germans fighting each other. Because the Americans, the only place you really see those Springfields is in uh, the Pacific. But, you know, on the Iron, not the Iron Front, but the uh, European Front, the Iron Front was... Uh, the Soviets and the Germans, you have a lot more similarities on weaponry. But otherwise, we do have a Fock Wolf, and we do have a single bomb for that Fock Wolf on top of what I assume 50 cals, and it might also have its heavier cannons as well. Uh, our pilot for that is going to be Oddball. Speaking of, uh, Wombat is going to be company commander for this scenario. Oh my god, it's tanks. <laughs> so we've got Panzer IVs, we've got a stub. We have some MG42 double mounts on these half tracks. We've got a single transport truck back here, and then a towed pack. Oh, baby. It's going to be armored combat galore. And then I think this platoon is the exact same. So that's going to be six tanks, two towed guns, pack 40s. And then mechanized infantry squads. And then there's also the single, um, okay, so five Panzer IVs and then a single stub tank. Aw, oh, man. All right, let's quickly go over at the Soviet side. They have a, I believe, a P-39 with a single bomb as well. And I'd assume the MGs and potentially cannons as well. Because we've got those on the side and whatnot. Looking at the Soviet forces, let's see what they got. T-34s. I forget the exact designation of this tank, but it's also the frontal firing piece. So I'm assuming it's going to be five T-34s in that. And they're given Bren carriers. All right, Lend-Lease Bren carriers. I can get behind that. And then they've got the uh, Toad. I forget the exact designation of this gun, but it's also, you know, the Pac-40 equivalent, like the Z-76 or something. Yeah, but well, they do have the working Bren gun on the front of them, too. And they have a lot more of those vehicles as well. So that is quite interesting to see. Stug, not Stub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this gun? Uh... Behind. Trying to see if there's any scoped uh, marksmen on either side. The Op 4 command is going to be Depso uh, under Soviet Company HQ, and Samuel is going to be their pilot. All right. So neither side has any driving AA defense, but at the same time, there's only one bomb. So I guess the plane is going to purely be for strafing infantry. I'm not sure if there's any other critical hard points to defend in this area. Blue 4 definitely got the short end of the stick. They've got slightly better weaponry for their squads in here, but their AO is much bigger to hold. And then Op 4s is more concise and a lot more defendable with all the open ground around it. And then you got all of these buildings here. Which can be fortified and entered, so that could form a really nice block. But at the same time, you're fighting against tanks. So even though they've got a smaller AO to defend with more coverage, they're fighting stuff that can put HE shells into them. And I think this is going to be a curse in disguise of a blessing. Because it's just going to more tightly pack them and they could potentially get annihilated immediately. SU-75 tank, yeah. I, again, I, I've seen it before. I just can't remember the name. It looks like they're going to start digging fortifications here. They've already started blocking the roads. But I'd say the Soviets are going to get a slight advantage for their assets uh, in terms of having to take um, a much bigger area. They could just camp on one side. But, I mean, again, catch-22 of you also have this area to defend. And you see that they've actually built a lot of earth rampants around on various sides here. So there is a little bit of built-in cover on the map as well, but this is going to be a tough one. Um, I honestly wouldn't be able to tell you if they're using G41s or G43s. I think the default one in IFA is the G43. I know other mods add the G41. I just can't remember if IFA itself adds the G41. Lots of buildings in here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
but it's whatever that is. And I honestly, I don't know enough between the G41 and the G43 to tell you if there's a difference there. But both are semi-automatic. Are they 10 shot or 5 shot? But by the way, the server hasn't been... I haven't seen any desync on this. Also, they're using the top of a gas station. I just realized that they're using the gas station rooftop to create this flooring. That's pretty funny. 10 shots, both of them? Yeah, it's fair. <sighs> All right, so this is the winter variation of the map, so this river is outright frozen, so the Soviets can easily drive over that. Both sides are spawning pretty equidistant from each other. You could literally have a platoon drive in and hit the fob, another platoon drive in, reinforce the town. Soviets, same thing. And the numbers are pretty even here, so... It's really going to be up to the tactical prowess of either Depso for Op4 or Wombat for Blue for to make either of this work, and neither of them are dedicated BIA players either. But we do see that BIA definitely have their own sections here, so round has officially begun. Oddball immediately going for the takeoff. Samuel just starting his takeoff now, so op, uh, Blue Four gonna get a slightly their plane's going to be a little bit ahead, but not by much. There he goes. And then we've got already Blue 4 moving their formations in here. The second platoon, funny enough, is being held. They're not advancing at the moment. Meanwhile, Soviet forces have half of their platoon, mainly the armor, going ahead. And a little bit of a scuffle in the back. They're leaving a single guy to solo crew one of those guns, but the other platoon is in full swing. All right, watching the planes right now. So Op4 plane is being kept in reserve. Whereas the blue four plane is already bearing to the AOs here. Can someone tell me what the point tally uh, and dispersion is between the uh, factions, if you don't mind? But here's the maximum render distance that they're working with, and here are the AOs here. Particle effects in the sky from some smoking out stuff between a tank and a truck on the Soviet area there. And you've got the Blue 4 plane still turning around here. Soviet forces have a majority of their elements. Some of them are even riding the map borders right now as they're starting to make their way on the riverbed. Some forces already crossing. Meanwhile, Blue 4 have all of their forces moving now. And they're mainly just doing a very aggressive push east, riding the southern map border. Interesting call. This is showing me that Blue 4 has no intention of hitting the FOB early on, where the Soviets could be doing anything at this point. Hold up. Plane is overhead. Going at a low speed, could be getting some scouting data for the Germans at the moment, or an early on attack. He's gonna be able to see these uh, lights down here as well. You can see him from above. Looking at his POV, yeah, he's gonna have really good eyes. Not even on the vehicles, but on the uh, spotlights. He's radioing the stuff in though, so he's gonna be telling Blue 4 that a good chunk of the Soviets are moving one way, but with so many assets to track, that's gonna be a great difficulty. Meanwhile, we see the Op 4 plane coming in to do something similar. Again, both are gonna have guns and a single bomb to utilize. From Samuel's perspective, 
Looks like he's just loitering around north of the German spawn here. Hold up, we see a gun run coming in for Oddball. He immediately starts strafing one of the Bren carriers because their lights are on. So let's see if they wise off and turn their lights off here. Uh, both sides have... Um, oh, no, you're talking about the airplane cannons. Based off the fact I saw that Blue 4 plane not use his cannon, I'm assuming they do not. They just have 50 cal and a single bomb to work with. So Oddball immediately climbs. But now you can see the assets moving by. He's stalling out. You got Flak firing. However... That it might be... No, from LA. here it looks like it's a fucking LA. Yeah, it kind of looks like an LA, I'm not sure. Did they just... Did Ask the front just got shot at? Maybe ask them what kind of plane they are in. Yeah, so they think that's the uh, an LA, but... We've got the Soviet plane now coming in. I think getting reports that the Blue 4 plane is strafing. Oh, Samuel has spotted. That plane, he's trying to stay above it so he doesn't confuse it. I wonder how the gun is down here, I think. Is that the one higher? The one higher? The one higher, yep. yeah. <laughs> now you got flak firing. So they're able to properly PID the right plane, but you got Samuel now spinning in. Trying to line up a shot. He just can't seem to maintain the speed of the Fock Wolf at the moment. He probably has limited ammo, and he also doesn't want to give away to Oddball that he has a bogey. There's the shooting. Oddball doing a quick wide uh, cut here and immediately cutting altitude. And I got to wonder, he's making these moves intentionally to try to give his gunnery crew Better can eyes. You to, can you ask the Focke Wolf to try to lead this fucking P-39 in toward the AA? Mm -hmm. no, that's, that's a good idea, good. bro. <laughs> yeah, that is a good idea. But you got the Soviet one now firing. But it's very difficult for them to lead those rounds. So Blue 4 basically tried for an early snipe on some Soviet assets, but now you're just having the planes dogfight. Oddball trying to climb up to engage. But some pretty beautiful maneuvers here. Samuel, though, seems to be really outmaneuvering Oddball at the moment. But Oddball's not falling for what Samuel's trying to line up. And the flak firing close, getting some hits. That's giving Oddball an opportunity to get on his tail. Gets another set of hits on. And the plane's still kicking. After two flak hits and a tail hit, I'm surprised this plane's still kicking. Flat coming around, but I gotta commend the Blue 4 gun crew for making the right PID call. Here's some more fire, and there it is. That's always great to watch. 
Now, here's the issue. Blue 4 were hoping to use their plane to get some early snipes on. Uh, but that dogfight has kind of allowed both sides to fully deploy their forces at this point. Hey, right oh Soviet. Hope you keep enjoying everything. Now we have some tanks blindly shelling the AO here for the amount of armor fighting we're going to have between these six tanks on both sides. Technically 12 total. I don't think they should be wasting their ammo at the moment. Funny enough, we do have a wounded guy here. It might have been from... Uh... Lost some blood. She is in pain. Oh. I have no idea what caused people to die right here. Maybe the flat gun accidentally fired, but... The air crew needs to be told they don't need to man that gun anymore. Uh, yeah, all right, now they're calling it. Yep, they don't need that gun anymore because it's probably not going to have an angle to do anything on, but now we're going to see if this plane can potentially get any strafes on infantry. But looking at the ground, we just had a tank shell come in and hit one of the T-34s. Another round coming in. But they're backing up that tank. Next round comes in, it's just short. But Blue 4, they've got great control of the southern side. I'm trying to see, Soviet forces are setting some forces around and on the rear. And you've got some Soviet tank fire on German positions. I'd imagine that could be over here as well. But you're hearing the tanks now firing. They've got two online. Gunner or commanders turned out. And I'm going to be honest, if either side is able to get a few early tank kills, that's going to give them a very good lead. I'm going to be honest, this is just a match of uh, World of Tanks, but with extra assets at this point. With all the infantry squads. Ren carriers uh, for the Soviets. Lend leash choice there, I'd assume. Uh, and then the... Half tracks for the Germans. Another round comes in. These two tanks trying to look for what's engaging them. If they can sight the target, they should be good. This is technically a tank destroyer, though. We see at least two different Blue Four tanks firing on this position. They just can't seem to range the weapons in. And they're falling short. That makes a hit, but it looks like the tank hunter found one of the assets that was shooting at him. And I'm trying to see, I thought that tree was a smoke billow, but it looks like they're now backing the tank up realizing they're under fire. We have a very nice line of tanks right here to basically cover against the front. You got some flanking fire coming from the left side. They're trying to hide up behind a hill though. And you just have this really long range engagement of literally over a kilometer as these tanks are trying to plink people off. But no side is going to be able to push infantry across this open area. But the Germans are on par with the objective areas here. So they're forcing the Soviets at a disadvantage. Because if they can control this middle ground, it leaves a big chunk of elements not able to do anything. But we do have infantry right here. And a strafing run from the plane. As AA fire is coming in. And he actually manages to destroy a Bren carrier. With that strafing fire. Brilliant. Thankfully, all the off-war elements were out of it. He's flying right over the AA position now. Takes a hit. I think that position is now reloading. Trying to fire some more. But as we saw with the dogfight, it's going to take a few more hits to take that plane out. Looking back at the fight, checking on the assets. I got to do a lot of scrolling to verify what's still alive and what's dead. We still have only that uh, Soviet pilot dead. And then one of the gun crew for Blue Four also dead for some silly reason. Hold up. I think we just had an armored asset get destroyed. Wow. Blue Four's tanks were able to take out the tank destroyer on Op Four's side. There's only one of those on both sides there. So I wonder if the 30, uh, not 34, is the Panzer Fours were able to find it. Or they brought up their uh, own stug tank and took it out. 
but that's definitely making that 34 pullback. Great gunnery there, but you still have, again, I see some of these tanks firing at blue four positions here. I can't tell if they're actually firing at them or if they're just putting random shots into the town. Because it sounds like they're, I can hear the explosions, but I don't know what specifically they're shooting at. Maybe just at the trenches they spot. And that's what Blue Force relying on is just baiting Op4 to fire at them so their own tanks can then engage. Tough call. I also do love how we have uh, a rear security pack gun to watch for anything that flanks around the Soviet side because Blue Force really relying on keeping all their guns facing one way. They do have another tank pulling that left side security as well towards the town, but they're also covering for any close angles in case anything comes in. Hey, you see the tracer run out, so they're basically just sniping at buildings. And again, that's a little tough because it's giving away their positions. Now, I do see some more bodies over here. I can't tell if that was someone that got sniped off or someone that went down to cook off because we do have a tank body right there as well, but one of the other tanks is using as cover, and then we just had an explosion over on this side as this tank, the 34, was up, I think, trying to find some angles, but Blue 4 quickly sighting in where all that armored is. And funny enough, he's firing at the company command tank now. Who is going to return in kind. But the Soviet tank is completely overranged. And you see them firing more at the 34. I'm wondering if any of the other blue four tanks are going to come up and try to assist in hitting this position. Now, sniping off the command tank early on wouldn't be so bad because Wombat's actually dismounted. He's commanding from the rear. That's a smart call. And then you still have the plane going around looking for additional assets to strafe. You know, funny enough, if he catches any of the Soviet commanders turned out of the tank, he could snipe them out. And I find it funny that we have the drive hatch open and the commander out here all just kind of looking around. No way. Wait, he's going to go for a run because they had his lights on. He's going for that Bren carrier. Most of his shots go overhead, though, so he's not able to get it detonated. Possibly got some disabling hits in, though. But he's going for outright trying to destroy the Bren Carriers, which is smart. That's going to force Op4 to be mainly on foot or utilize other assets. And if those assets are caught while moving, that just increases the likelihood that he's going to get a massive multi-kill with them. So he's coming around for another run. And there's the strafe. So Fonz gets knocked out in the vehicle. A little bit of a desync spike there. That's the first one I've seen, though. There's nothing too, too bad. I'm going to check the roster real quick. You see that tank crew's bled out. Sometimes that also means something blew up. We have another attack coming in. Tank shell's also coming into this position. And he's just focusing purely on harassment here. Small arms unlikely to hit him. Not impossible, though. Second desync spike. Now the server's struggling a bit. All right, well, Soviets are in a bit of a bind here. We've got three separate forces. Server's starting to recover, though. It's just really difficult for the Soviets here because the Germans have a really nice defensive line. They've got their forces still in the FOB, but this shows they're not going to go for the company FOB. They're going to let these uh, assets be neutral. And they're just going to let things play out here. Whereas the Soviets, I mean, we got some stuff on reserve. They could send that in and actually start trying to hit the objective. I think that's the only way they're going to be able to save anything. Is if they start having their forces in reserve get a bit more aggressive. But beyond that, it's, it's going to be tough to say. But I think uh, Blue 4 plane just came in, strafed that one vehicle. And we've got two bodies here. And the server's starting to recover. Oh, and now it's flown away. <laughs> v 
very powerful uh, plane weaponry out there to make those Bren carriers fly in debris, but... You got some machine gun fire coming out trying to hit this Bren carrier. We have a DP-27 gunner down right there. As the Soviets seem to be taking additional casualties, more tank shells firing this position. We see a mortar starting to fire. They brought two crates over. So they're going to be trying to mortar the defensive line that Blue 4 has set up in this position. I'm curious to see where those ranging shells will go if they're anywhere close at this point. Wow! That, I think, was a tank shell coming in. That hit the asset over there, and then you've got a far tank, and... Ah, there's their tank hunter. You've got that engaging this position... People trying to pick up the wounded and continue to pull them back because they're taking some pretty heavy fire. Blue 4 plane, meanwhile, flying in close. Based on the fact that I'm not seeing any connect or disconnect messages and this came in, like, randomly, like the server was fine and now it's happening, I, I feel like this is a little malicious, but... What can you do? There's certain ways certain desync patterns behave, and this one... Yeah... And you're saying it's because Harrison disconnected, but I'm still seeing spikes... ...and the aftermath. Okay, they're saying it's the mortars, actually. It could have been tied to the mortars, too. If the mortars started firing and that caused all the desync, then by all means, that's probably correct. So if the server calms down after that message comes in, that could be it. I was just trying to see, like, what was exploding or causing that to happen. And if uh, the admin was watching and he's saying it's tied to the mortars, and I did see a mortar fire and then desync happen, uh, spikes happen. So it might be the mortar explosion. So, yeah. There we go. I'm just happy it's not malicious, then. We got the plane coming in. It does a strafe on the other Bren carrier, and you literally just have Oddball doing his best to strafe what he can. I wonder if he's going to find these two assets or if he's too busy trying to line up another shot. But I think Op4 are going to just try to push in and either assault the objective or try to assault the defensive line here. Let's look in the eyes of Oddball up here. He's on two kills, the aircraft kill, and then a negative one tank kill. And I think that's just because the Brens are green four assets, and it's set blue four and green four assets together, but he's trying to look into strafe what he can. Hey, Sparkle, how you doing? But yeah, he's trying to see uh, if he can find anything down on the ground to additionally hit. But this plane's been probably one of the most effective World War II planes in PvP I've seen in a hot second. So he's trying to see if there's uh, a grouping up he could potentially hit there, but hopefully he doesn't get too tunnel vision because this is still company warfare. There's, <laughs> we started with about 185 and we're still at least at 170, all deaths considered. Op 4 down their aircraft and their tank destroyer, but they still have five tanks to work with. They're also down, I think, three Bren carriers. But this match could still go either way. Uh, we're seeing Blue 4 running into a potential problem here because we do have Soviet forces starting to assault the Blue 4 held town here. And even though Blue 4 have better footing right now, if Op 4 play on the objectives, they could still get an early lead. But we do have the plane coming around. It might be looking for more Bren carriers to hit. Might have spotted those two on the road. We'll have to see what they do here. But hello, Victus. How you doing, Broski? And Jen Brig, or Gren Brig, excuse me. Thanks for the raid once again, Broski. How are you doing? What were you playing? We're currently covering a 185-player PvP match between OFCRA and BIA, two pretty large communities. And it is a World War II. Germans on blue four. Op four are the Soviets. And he's about to start getting some strafes in. There's the shots. I'm really impressed that nobody died. 
There is definitely someone uncon on the back, but I'm really surprised that 50 cal did not just cut him out right. Yeah, mortar shell just landed. I heard it in the distance, and then there was a lag spike, so it's definitely the mortars. There's another strafe. Holy crap. That one blows up, and it disables the other one. So a massive multi-kill for the aircraft. And that plane is just going to be bad news for the entire Soviet force. That's giving Blue for a very early edge. And otherwise, the Germans are really content about holding that line. But looking in the town here, we do have one op four knockout. I think Blue Force realized that they've got forces coming in. There's a big bush in the way here for Fush not to see the Soviet players coming in. Yeah, they're saying they don't know if those are Germans there. I don't know how this got here, but it's here. <laughs> I didn't see a lot of AT infantry on either side, which is all that more concerning. I'd imagine both sides probably have AT grenades, but in terms of actual assets, it's hard to say. They're reporting Russians close. We're hearing vehicles cooking off. Big amount of Soviet forces just got taken out out here by what sounded like an MP40. They just shot the squad leader with the radio. They're trying to throw grenades and it had a bad bounce. Toll, I don't think noticed, but thankfully it's got a longer fuse. You have a Soviet vehicle out here. That's uh, another T-34 taken out. And then I think this was another T-34 that came up uh, on its own, also taken out. So a lot of Soviet armor has gone down. But so far, the initial Soviet advances are getting repelled. And once again, Samuel gets a kill on yet another Bren carrier. And we somehow turns into a CSAT guy. <laughs> ah, yes, the Katiba. That's going to be a very powerful asset for the rest of this operation. <laughs> we see smoke grenades in play as well. Looks like now the German forces are transitioning their defensive line north. And again, this is an example of someone who really knows what they're doing in a very powerful asset and doing a very specific job. And that specific job is going to be the linchpin in undermining an entire side's operations. Usually we don't see a single asset be this effective, but that is, I think, the fourth or fifth Bren carrier he smoked. And again, I have not seen an airplane be that effective in an OFCRA match, honestly, ever. So you still got these two Russians here, or I guess Soviets would be the uh, proper term. They're just trying to hide right now as uh, German forces come around trying to figure out what's going on. They might start clearing building to building, Newton coming in. Throw a grenade. Yep. You know, it's World War II. The best thing you could do is throw the grenade back. But yeah, I mean, a single shot rifle versus a submachine gun. I mean, the... Shots per second alone is probably what's going to get you that volume of fire. But I'm going to be honest, have the Germans lost a single tank yet? 
There's one, two, three, four, five. And I don't know where the sixth one is. There it is, it's under command. So, Soviets I know have at least lost three tanks. We have another one up here. Though, based on the blackened texture down here, and you can see the impact, it's gotten hit at least once. That's another one destroyed, so there's four destroyed tanks right now. There's uh, an abandoned brand, but there's their tank destroyer. There's one other tank, and then there were two more we caught on the front line. So yeah, these are the remaining two T-34s here. Then you got Zero all the way up here with a handgun and a radio. He might have been one of the gun crews for the two uh, 76s that the German force had, the equivalents of the Pac-40. But he's going to go with his pistol in style. But between the German armor and Samuel and, uh, excuse me, Samuel was the Op 4 pilot. Uh, Blue 4 has Oddball flying. But the tanks destroying enemy armor and Oddball destroying all the Bren carriers. And this tank is also destroyed. So the Soviets have no armor left other than this piece, and it's already taken damage. So we have seen a total stomp out of Op 4's assets. So this is going to be a very difficult time. For the remaining Soviet forces. So it's been the 30 minute mark. So both sides gained four points for controlling their uh, objectives. Op 4 were trying to push infantry in to potentially stop Blue 4 from cashing in, but they just didn't have the support because a big chunk of their forces were pinned down on the outside there. And I'm having trouble tracking the plane at this point. And again, like, both sides also have two field guns, which are um, going to be, you know, for fighting tanks. I don't think either side have lost either of those yet. But I'd imagine if Samuel finds them, he's going to strafe the shit out of them. You see, uh, you see one of the Pac-40s over here. So Blue Force still have theirs, but these are going to be obsolete in a second. Because one of the, like, that's the last tank coming in. It's about to drive right in the middle of the line. Then you have the other one over here. Whereas the Soviet ones, I have no idea. But we're about to see a T-34 go CQC here. We do have a... German half-track, but I'm not sure if the Soviets are going to expect armor to get this close to them. So this one little tank could be in a really good spot to get some snipes before Blue 4 realizes what's going on. And the first shot whiffs overhead, and the gunner immediately turns in. And immediately takes a returning shot. However, the tank, I think, just took a disabling hit, but the other tank did as well. And they're immediately abandoning it. So both sides got a shot into each other. And it sounds like something else just fired at the tank and took it out. And that is all, I say again, all armor pieces down for the Soviets. Six tanks taken out. And I see only one wounded tank for Blue 4. They might be able to get it repaired, but it looks pretty badly disabled. And again, with the Bren carriers getting sniped off by Samuel, I don't really see how the Soviets can get this one. Maybe they can bring all their infantry in and provide a really nasty infantry fight in the main town and still stall for points. Maybe go for a tie game at this point. But at this point, whoever is going to control both of these zones is going to be the winner. Because I still doubt we're going to see both sides get knocked down to five or less. And with Blue 4 still having all their armor assets, it's very, very unlikely that Op 4 is going to get the survival bonus out of them because five infantry is literally going to be two tanks. So if two tanks on Blue 4 survive, it's fine. And the only AT I've really seen on the infantry side has been nil, which means they probably, both sides have AT grenades because 
in the IFA mod, both sides have the same textured AT grenade. It's just called something different. So I'd imagine that's what their AT is, but that requires them to be within five meters of the armored asset. All Op 4 tanks are dead at the moment. There was one up here, but I looked at it, it was cooked off. Yeah, there she is. It, the only reason it came up on the map was because it had a wounded guy in it. But he bled out. So you also have the entirety of Command dead. Depso came up here and got picked off. So Op 4 is commanderless, planeless, armorless, and they've lost a good chunk of their Bren carriers to the Focke-Wolf. A platoon of Op 4 infantry is caught in this town, taking cannon fire. And then the two other platoons are up here. There's a Bren carrier driving around, but if Samuel gets a wind of it, he's going to immediately take it out. And now you're just going to have the tanks bullying the remaining infantry here. Pierce realizing he finally can't run through the open field if there's a tank watching. Pierce desperately trying to put some smoke out, really not abandoning the open field idea. You hear Nuzzy yelling his little heart out. That was an AP shell that just came by. And actually, wow, knocked Pierce and Fawns out. I think the rest of this match is just going to be tanks cleaning up the remaining infantry. Stay down. Hi. Huh? You the medic? No. I am PPSH. He's not dead. I'm taking his PPSH. They got flare guns too. Comes in, ooh, a PPSH. Now you have another tank up here. Doesn't have any angles on the Op 4 infantry that are coming in. Most sane one hard to play <laughs> conversation. It's okay, they're doing their best. All right, so we did see a message earlier saying they're replacing one of the mortars with a, uh, a Pack 40 And we have... Oh, they're firing at the Bren carrier over here. It looks like the other Bren carrier also got destroyed. So these infantry are pretty much pinned, taking casualties. So they're going to try to move the Pack gun up, but there is another Pack gun and multiple tanks watching this town. I'm curious what the kill count of this plane is right now. He's still on six, negative two, so he's officially just, he's been credited with two Bren kills and then the aircraft kill. And the reason they're showing up as negative is because Arma sides blue four and green four as the same side by default. So I imagine that probably hasn't been edited because there's no reason to because there's no green four assets, but they regard the Bren as a green four asset, therefore it's allied to blue four because IFA is the only mod that puts the Germans. Which is all subjective at that point, but usually you see the bad guys, quote unquote, in war as op for and vice versa. But again, that's very subjective. So just chalk it up to how arm is programmed. So again, I gotta wonder, that tank's on four infantry kills, by the way. If it's gonna, if it hasn't already, and I do see some dead bodies here, start shelling this area. Oh, 
Etherreal. I hope I pronounced that right. If you want, type exclamation point OFCRA. That'll get you in the Discord of this community, and you can jump in on next week's operation. Koth, I'm going to be honest, is definitely one of the more mainstays of Arma 3, but it's usually individuals in a massive, you know, 100-player, 200-player battle. Whereas this is meant to be a bit more organized. But also usually turns into a Koth-style scenario with the insanity that's going on. Oh, these poor Soviet infantry. Look at this man. Oh, he's an AI. That's even better, but he's got night vision. I think the uh, the respawn script's glitched out. So yeah, the other tanks now shooting into this building. You're seeing more Soviets getting knocked out. This is what I called earlier of, if the Soviets are in a tighter building, doesn't that just mean that this stuff's going to get taken out a lot easier? You just saw the AA gun on the rooftop get sniped. And then you got Samuel flying overhead confirming that that AA gun's down. And you just have bodies littered everywhere. And they are just pummeling this building with HE. You got bodies falling off the rooftop. Wow, ask and I shall receive. And most of that garrison has been cut down to indirect fire. I don't think that building has a destroy texture, so it won't be destroyed per se. Yeah, how do we get their attention? Let's throw a green flare in front of our fighting position and see what happens. There is a German tank over here. And I think it is trying to find an angle on this vehicle, but they can't seem to line it up. And I spoke too soon. Bren just got disabled. So they have no choice but to try to get on the gun and line up a shot before they're taken out. And the rounds are slowly inching closer. But this poor gun doesn't even know how to line itself up properly. Thankfully, the Panzer's having a really difficult time aiming. They just changed ammo type, so now the rounds are a little heavier, so I think it's throwing them off. That one goes over. How did you land a perfect hit and then mess that up? Oh my god. Return fire. I can only imagine what screaming is going on in that tank. The fact that they've whiffed about 10 rounds. Yeah, they're just backing away at this point. They don't want to deal with it. These poor bastards can't even fire the gun versus a team that won't even fire their gun. Oh my god. So I don't see that pack gun down with the Soviets anymore, but you can just look at the sheer amount of symbolism here. I wonder if you could call Samuel and say, hey, do you see a smoking Bren? Strafe it. Yeah, as people have been saying in chat, I'm pretty sure the Soviets are actually LARPing as legitimate Soviet soldiers. Because if I were to tell someone, hey, we're going to have a 185 match, and one side is going to lose their plane, they're going to lose all of their tanks, and they're going to start with six, by the way, and they're going to lose about two-thirds of their APC transports... And the other side is not going to have any vehicle casualties. I'd say you're freaking higher than pterodactyl tits. Because, you know, at least one side would get one thing. All right, now they're firing, but it's going way overhead. Maybe the Soviets will be able to get one vehicle kill on the board. I spoke too soon. Wait, no, it was early. 
Can the Brave Pack uh, ZL76 crew actually get a kill here? They're reporting a hit. And they just... Did you actually just disable yourself by shooting the fence? Did you just knock yourself out? What? 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 <laughs> they disabled the gun by hitting HE on the fence. I can't. They blow the tank up, so at least there's one armored kill. But they armored the gun. But they didn't even armor it. They hit the fa I Okay. All right. The Soviets sacrificed their last anti-tank gun to get one vehicle kill. Meanwhile, Pierce, the stealthiest man alive, realizing that the entirety of his community is dead, picking up a DP-27. Can Pierce channel his inner Audrey? Oh, those are Germans. His inner Audrey Hado. As I say that, he gets the first kill. <coughs> Somehow grabs the... I was about to say, why is that grenade floating? Oh, those are grenades everywhere. Love you, buddy. Anyway, there goes that squad of Op 4 infantry. You got some Blue 4 down here. They're fighting with another Op 4 squad in that position. But, I mean, on this side, we've got... You know, a fairly good chunk of units still left over, but the so uh, German side, that's a lot of, that's a lot of scroll compared to that. Takes me about three quarters of a second to scroll all the way down. The scroll from the bottom takes me about double to triple that time. <gasps> you did not! You did not. He just got three kills and two knockouts with that. They're waking back up, but he put a bomb right on top of the infantry. Oh, he coming back. I think he just killed a guy with that. No, he did not. All right. <laughs> Oddball, one of the best pilots I've seen in PvP in a hot second on a World War II plane, that's for damn sure. I love that you've got Ivno and Bluck running up here. What do they got? They have handguns. And they're fighting someone with an automatic rifle. Or was that two Mosins that fired at? It was two Mosins that fired at the same time. All right, three Mosins versus two handguns. No, 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 no. We should pull back. Like, we, we cannot cross onto them. No, 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 we should pull back. Proceeds to get shot. What's... <laughs> what was that? We should pull back. Proceeds to get shot. Classic PvP. I can't tell if Blue Force Blue on Blueing. Yeah, they're shooting at their own tank. Or they're shooting over it. I I don't know. Those are HE shells, though. So they're shelling over here on the left side. Oh my god, Bluck's gone back. Did he actually just get a kill? He just got a kill with the handgun. He's baiting Op4 to come closer so he can have him in CQC where his pistol will have the advantage. And op is actually falling for it, so they double tap Ivno main. See ya, Warboy. Yeah, I do agree. Uh, I think... I think Oddball had the Panzer Chalk. He just did a strafe and knocked someone out in that church. 
Not church, the, um, it's not a church, it's a, like a chateau. And we're seeing more HE shells hitting this position. That's another tank firing. And that garrison's number is getting lesser and lesser and lesser. Bluck is literally dodging Mosin, Mosin shots. He's trying to get the rifle. Oh, but Audrey Sip gets him with a pickoff. Meanwhile, this chateau is getting strafed to oblivion. Remember, there can't be a garrison if there's no one alive in the garrison to consider it a garrison. That wasn't a cooked grenade, that was an AT grenade, which uh, detonates on impact. So he literally just did the equivalent of noob tubing someone. I mean, you can tell by the sheer amount of bodies here that this was once a pretty hefty garrison. And now, not so much. I don't think Samuel's gonna have anything left to do in this scenario here, cause he's, he's done his job. We do have two Bren carriers in the rear. And then a transport truck, and if Samuel spots them, it's game over for him. But that man has used all of his assets effectively at this point. Blue 4 bringing a unit in. It's a hour and a half time limit. Triple kill for Damien. <clears throat> Holding out with that drum mag, PPSH gets a... <clears throat> nope, he's just praying and praying, but he does get a fourth kill. Ping is trying to run in to find him, only to get found. Damien on six kills right now as the shots are ripping the bushes apart. Throws a grenade. Not sure if that got anyone either, but all right. And he just fragged himself with his own grenade. You literally had it. You had it. And then you, I think you threw that thinking it was a smoke, but yeah, anyway. Let's see if he wakes back up, but we've got Soviet vehicles advancing on the objective. <clears throat> Blue four literally have a tank watching the MSR. And a pack gun. Oh, he's back awake. Spraying out at Shadow. Coming over here to see if, uh, nope, tank spotted him. Truck is desperately trying to cover. They need to keep driving. They don't want to stay back there because otherwise they're just going to stay pinned and picked off anyway. Oddball doing a very low pass. Damien maneuvering around. Shadow had a shot. Will this be the end for Damien? It is! As Shadow gets a great quick uh, sight shot called it a quick scope, but he's not credited with the kill. Weird. And the tank is now advancing. It spotted the Bren carrier. 
the little Bren that could. That shot went right over it. I wonder if this truck is going to drive up and try to AT it, but no, they're going to keep driving. So, uh, German tank goes over a rock as Op4 is still trying to drive around. Pat Gun has been set up to engage the Chateau. And yeah, the, the tank's holding, but they're being bypassed. And you got the other Bren care, uh, car coming around. Got some unconscious men on the side over there. We still have 36 minutes left on the scenario here. They're now taking fire. Pack gun being turned. Transport truck driving right in. <laughs> They're out shouting hoorah. <laughs> Classic Soviet tactics. <coughs> Soviets have uh, been able to garrison a building here. Now you got a automatic rifle coming in here. One guy gets taken out, grenade goes all the way down there. No kills. He's doing a quick reload. Filling the internal magazine. Uh-oh. Man runs out of ammo, but Claw doesn't realize that his battle buddies are getting taken out internally. Oh my god. The man, the myth, Abram comes in and cleans up seven Soviet infantry like it's nothing. And this Bren gun has been, yeah, the Bren carrier is taken down. And the Soviets are down to three groups of infantry. A Bren carrier that's dismounted early. The remnants of the FOB garrison. And a two-man team that's getting harassed by a Panzer IV. Funny enough, the damaged one from earlier. Ay, ay, ay. Is Samuel attempting a landing? No, I keep calling him Samuel. It's oddball. Samuel's the Soviet pilot. The man wants to land on the ground and get some more, does he? Germans breaching the compound, or at least attempting to. Getting some grenade throws in. That would be really funny if he turned left and started bar barraging that position with machine guns.
All right, flip for flap, the last remaining Soviet member in here. He does have a drum mag PPSH, though. NASA pushing his position with that MP40. AT grenades himself. Another grenade goes out. Reinforcements entering the main gate. Flip for flap. Can he channel his inner Audrey Hotto and hold out against the massive amount of forces in this position? That is the luckiest grenade throw I have ever seen. That literally went through three sets of windows and doors to land literally at the man's feet. What kind of aim bot for a grenade is that bullshit? Caster cursed as always, wow. Yeah. And just like that, I think it's safe to say the Germans have won this in what ended up being one of the most one-sided fights I've ever seen in PvP on a scale like this. I've seen efficient si uh, wipes where one side cleans up the other in like a platoon versus platoon. This was company versus company. And my god, did the Soviets decisively get sweeped. Uh-oh. So we've got some of the... Yep, yeah, you gotta give it to the Soviet players. They actually did a really great job of cleaning up that uh, infantry team around the pack guns. Unfortunately, this has prompted a German response. As the rest of the German infantry get cleaned up, I wonder what's firing over here if that's a 42. No, it's a stolen DP-27. I was wondering, because it doesn't sound like a 42. It sounds more like a coax from a German vehicle, but no, it's just a... Oh, God. I hope you guys have AT grenades. You're about to need them. Yeah, you're right. They're going for the pack guns that I'm not even sure they know about to then eliminate the tanks. Did he just shoot a commander? He might have been trying to shoot this commander here. Uh, don't ask me what he's wearing. I, I don't even know at that point. Is that a grenade? Ah. Oh. Like, shouldn't smoke be coming out of that or something? Oh. Well, maybe it wasn't smart to throw that, because now they know you're here. And they spawned a cheeseburger, but thankfully the tree stole the round. We got the two men down here. How is Callie still alive? There's a lot of blood. They're gonna try to flank around. I'm gonna laugh if they actually get on the pack guns and take them out. This would be huge. Oh, here it is. I think it was short. Oh, God, Cheeseburger flying. Cheeseburger losing to gravity. <laughs> what? What was that? Oh. Oh, God. OK, 
Okay, he's back. But he's still dead. I don't know what happened there, Chief. It was a Houdini trick. Oh gosh, he also made the house disappear. What can Cheeseburger do next? Literally looting his own body. I don't... <laughs> I think he got respawned after that, but that was pretty damn funny. Oh, and Cheeseburger gets flown away again. Let's see if he gets respawned a third time. Just do it for the meme. Remember when I said if one side lost all their tanks, there'd probably be a lot of crazy shit that happens? He's playing dead. An effective Soviet maneuver. I heard it worked in a fountain one time. He's going to play dead, get on the pack gun, and hit the tanks. And then we've got two Soviet players over there. If I have a mod on, you can pay it out to Blue 4, by the way. Op 4's, Op 4's lost. The final score is probably going to be 16 to 4. Surprised the rear MG gunner didn't shoot. I think Kelly knows if he shoots here, he's dead. And he actually just disabled the tank. Misses the shot on Skeeta. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Alien walks in front that prevents the shot on Kelly. What? <laughs> what in the deuce ex machina is this? And then somehow a DP-27 fires through the bottom latch of the... They're calling it. GG. What on earth was that? is following this. Did, did you just... <laughs> Mine's bigger! <laughs> no, 
Anyone got the Looney Tunes theme for this? He also got the second kill. All right, I'm going to call it here. It's GG. There is going to be a bonus round that involves couple wagons and a bunch of custom compositions, but Bloodwind's giving me something to do for her real quick, so I got to go get that taken care of and then take care of the uh, pog stuff. So, yeah, they're calling out the bonus round right now, but I got to go take care of that, unfortunately. Nonetheless, thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Cheers. Ah, uh, hold on. I'm trying to think if I can do this in like five, ten minutes. Yeah, no, she's asking. Okay, no, I got to go do that. See ya.